Hello friends, welcome to the Jazz Ranch, Hip Cats, Groovy Chicks, and Finger Popping Daddies. Welcome back, and you know, it's a sad time in our lives in which we're all in isolation, but one thing you can do is you can practice your music and watch my videos, so that's a positive thing, I think. And you know, I'm going to be giving you a particular song tonight from the great American songbook called Witchcraft. It was written by Cy Coleman and Carol Lee. And it was a big hit for Frank Sinatra. Now, what song was not a big hit for Frank Sinatra? I can't think of any. Maybe Frere Jacques. I don't think he did that one. But anyway, they asked Frank, what made him so great? Did you have a formula for uh, your success? And he said, what formula? I never had one. So I couldn't say what the main ingredient is. I think everybody who's successful in this business has one common ingredient. The talent God gave us. The rest depends upon how it's used. So well, that's so true. You know, it's, you, you have to find what it is that you are special about. What is your special talent and use that. And that will give happiness to you and your life and your family and everything else. You know, it doesn't matter about the money. Forget about that. Do something that is meaningful to you in your life. So now here we go with a great song from Cy Coleman and my interpretation of Witchcraft. I'm going to be talking about the locked hands technique, or it's also called the parallel chord style, which was invented by Milt Bunkner back in the early 1950s, and it was picked up by Nat King Cole, Red Garland, George Shearing in particular, Bill Evans and Oscar Peterson, and many pianists after that. But the thing about it is it's really a doubling the melody, but it's as Barry Harris talks about the diminished sixth scale, he's talking about this scale. I'm in the key of F now, so that's the F scale. Now add the extra note, which gives me the diminished chord there on the second chord. So you have six chord, diminished chord, six chord inverted, diminished chord inverted, six chord inverted, diminished chord, six chord inverted, and then diminished chord, 
so the diminished chords are approaching each one of those six chords you know usually in this case from below now to make it locked hands you're just going to add the melody note in the left hand and double that melody note there so it's sound like that that's the sound of it and it's you know it's that kind of sound which what happened when George Shearing got a hold of it he, he really extended it in, in this way say this is the melody so now what he would do is he would have the vibes player play these notes you have the guitar player playing that note or this note. So they would have, he'd have this big sound between the three instruments playing the melody and he gave it a very smooth, unique sound that on only uh, George Shearing could get. So now the first chord is gonna be, what I like to do is I like to put the bass note in there to clarify it, but the bass player in the backing track is playing it. Then the D goes from an F chord that and I play an intro like this so I'm playing that Barry Harris scale perfectly but then the next chord which is diminished now I have to make it a diminished chord here so now melody note see so now I'm playing a diminished chord and inverting it that's diminished you see then it's a two chord in minor. Now I can go to, well I could go, I could do that. See, so there you have how I could harmonize that first passage. The next part of the song now goes to B flat major seven, so I have this. Like that, and goes to B flat minor. And then the A flat six. The G seven augmented. So it's like the pretty unique sound. Now you could keep the locked hand technique going through the whole song, but I, I like to change it up. So the next section I do this. Lock chords, right in root position. Then inversions. Now spread voicing. They might ask what is that chord? Well, that's like a superimposed chord. An E7 with a B flat on top. Now what does that make it? It makes it an E chord with a flat nine. That's the sharp 11 and that's the seven doubled. 11, yeah. So that flat nine sharp 11 combination is, is, is very hip. Now here you could do the uh, Do that I do something different there just to for more variety again this this minor chord minor seven minor seven with a raised seventh minor seven minor six no same thing on the G minor Here's a tritone substitute on the D flat. Yeah. Now you may be asking, what's the best way to practice this technique? We'll start out with just the right hand and practice the Barry Harris diminished scale technique in which you play a sixth and then a diminished chord, then a sixth, then a diminished chord, then a sixth. 
then a diminished chord, then a six, then a diminished chord, then a six, like that. And then double the melody in, in the left hand. So it sound like this. For this one. You know, now you can practice it uh, in lines, maybe. Start out with something easy like a ballad, maybe. Polka dots and moonbees. something very simple you know you can start to practice this based on scales in any key or you can practice it like um, as if you were improvising in which um, you know Red Garland George Shearing Bill Evans and Oscar Peterson and Nat King Cole they could all all of them could improvise using this technique you know In a way, there's a lot of things you need to master to become a pro. And, you know, it may take years or may, you can do it very quickly. It depends on your aptitude. But the thing is, you, you want to learn how to um, play chords and melody in inversions, you know. You want to learn spread voicing. You want to learn spread voicing. You want to learn locked hands. You want to learn drop two, which is this uh, this one here. That sound. You want to learn how to improvise. You want to learn how to embellish a melody. Or even improvise. Improvise in chords. Okay, so it's it's daunting, right? Well, no, it's because you need to learn one thing at a time, and as you make progress along the along the journey of it, each level will be a reward to you. In other words, you'll once you've mastered one one of these techniques you will have progressed, you know, and it, it, it has to take years. I mean, it has to um, take time. So be patient with it and enjoy the journey as you uh, go through it. Signing off from the Jazz Ranch, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you like this version of witchcraft and applying it to the locked hands technique. I hope you learned some things from this. Please write to me. I love to hear from you, and I, I do respond to all my comments, you know. I, I uh, try to keep up. You know, if I get like a week behind, it's really hard to keep up. But I will always try to respond to your comments. And if I don't, write to me again, and I will respond. Anyway, until next time, I'll say swing loose, but please be safe and spread kindness. Bye-bye.